at the end of high school, I got a job selling rainbow vacuum cleaners, and I was selling them door to door in the Boston suburbs area. And of course, there's a couple places I got thrown out of, and other places uh, where they bought two. <laughs> it was a fantastic um, introduction to selling, and luckily, uh, I still went to college. <laughs> The lucky break of my life uh, was getting into Stanford uh, Graduate School in Computer Science in 86. In the past, I had never met entrepreneurs, and I had put them on a pedestal like they were godlike in all these ways. And so it really helps to be around some of them to see their regular people with a good idea. The thing I took away was with, if they can do it, I can do it. And I worked at a startup for two years. I, like a typical, you know, 25-year-old programmer, had messy desks and lots of old coffee cups, you know, growing various fungi. <laughs> and I went into work one day really early, and I caught the CEO. I'm cleaning my mugs in the bathroom. And I was like, oh, have you been cleaning my mugs all year? And he said, yes. And I said, why? Uh, and he said, well, it was the one thing I could do for you. You know, you do so much for the company. And so I ended up feeling, of course, like, God, that, I would follow that guy off the ends of the earth. Uh, and that's pretty much where he took the company. And I learned so much in that. I realized leadership is pretty nuanced because there's the personally endearing part about character and followership. And there's also the strategic part about not leading the company into a box canyon. So it was a, a really good lesson on it the time that I started my first company, I was 30 and everyone said, oh, I was so young. The fundamental is to be self-aware enough that you want to learn and you learn through the criticisms and suggestions of others. At Pure Software, the company's culture was not that strong. And that was the beauty for me of getting to start over with Netflix because I realized that the trick in, in business is figuring out what scenarios could grow into a material threat because not all things will kill you. And if you get distracted dealing with every possible threat, you'll be very unfocused. I think of management strategy uh, like chess, where a human chess player has to examine a couple of key strategies, and mostly they're pruning the tree of possibilities. And if you prune correctly, you can see further down than the next person on the relevant paths. From the day we started, we knew DVD was going to die, and we named the business Netflix and not DVDbymail.com. So we had an advantage over Blockbuster that had a really great business in store rentals before it suddenly went away. But uh, I wish we had realized how hard they were going to attack. There was a multi-year battle for survival between Blockbuster and Netflix. One quarter we shrunk um, because they were basically hitting us on price so hard. We underestimated them to our peril. And honestly, in hindsight, if they had started two years earlier, uh, when we were that much smaller, they probably would have won. But they had quite a bit of debt, which constrained their flexibility, and then ran out of money. A great company is like jazz. You know, you want players who can improvise, partially because the climate's constantly changing and you're learning along the way. But you also have to have great judgment, like the chess player. So if you keep your North Star as, you know, how do I make the best product in this category for the people I'm trying to serve, and then not get too distracted, that's probably a good place to be.